Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's a good example to illustrate electromagnetic induction. The problem says, what is the EMF induced when the magnetic field changes from 1.2 teslas to zero in five seconds with a radius, uh, with a 0.5 meter radius loop conductor, why wow, that's, that's a mouthful, positioned perpendicular to the field. So what this says is, uh, imagine that we have a magnetic field the initial strength of the magnetic field is equal to 1.2 teslas. And after 5 seconds, when t equals 5 seconds, the magnetic field strength is equal to 0 teslas. All right. Now we have a magnetic field. It changed from 1.2 to 0 teslas. Now we have a loop conductor and it's positioned perpendicular to the field. So here's a loop conductor so that the magnetic field can go through it. And perpendicular means that the point, the perpendicular vector to the, to the loop is parallel to the B field, which means that the plane of the loop is perpendicular to the B field. So the B field can go through the loop. So here's a conductor in the shape of a loop. Uh, it's circular in shape and it has a radius r equal to 0 0.5 meters. So how much flux is going through the loop to start with? Well, we could say that the flux through the loop is equal to the strength of the B field dotted with the area. And of course, in this case, since the, the uh, vector of the area is, per is parallel to the B field, this can now be written as B times A times a cosine of 90 degrees. Oh, not 90 degrees, it's 0 degrees because it's parallel cosine of 0 degrees, which of course is 1, so it's equal to B times A. All right, and the B field starting out is equal to 1.2 teslas, and the area is the, well, it's a circle, so we go pi times R squared, and so this is equal to 1.2 teslas times pi times the radius 0 0.5 squared, uh, that would be 0.25, so what's that's uh, 0.3 pi I better get a calculator for that. So that's 0.3 times pi equals, so that would be equal to 0 0.94. And of course, the units for flux would be uh, tesla meter squared, simply tesla times the area of the circle. So that's the initial flux uh, through the current loop, or I shouldn't say current loop, through the conductor loop. And then in five seconds, it goes from that amount to zero. What does that do? Well, it actually creates what we call an EMF. An EMF. It actually creates a potential difference across the loop so that current will begin to flow through the loop. So the first thing we're going to do is simply using um, Faraday's law here to find the amount of voltage induced or the amount of EMF induced. And Faraday said that the EMF induced is equal to minus the change in the flux over time. Okay, now the flux, as we defined it, in this case is B times A. So in this case, that would be equal to minus the change in the product of B times A over time. And since in this case, the area is not changing, the area is not getting bigger, it's not getting smaller, the the loop is not tilting so that the effective area becomes smaller. We can take that out of the delta symbol. So this is equal to minus A times a change in the B field over time. And that we know is changing because the B field goes from uh, 1.2 initially to a zero finally. So this can be written as minus A times a change in the B field, which is from uh, final to initial, that's zero minus 1.2 teslas divided by the time elapsed, which is five seconds. And of course, the area in this case would be pi r squared. So this is equal to minus pi times r squared. And I might as well put in the units or the measurement for r. It's 0 0.5 meters, so 0 0.5 meters squared times 0 minus 1.2 teslas, and all divided by 5 seconds. So what is it equal to? Well, we have a 0.5. We square that. We multiply that times pi. Now we, um, we multiply that times a minus 1.2, and we divide that by 5. 
And it turns out this is equal to 0 0.19. And what are the units? Well, this is EMF induced. We're actually inducing a voltage. It's as if we put a battery in there equivalent to this value. So this is, the unit here is volts. We're actually inducing a voltage on that loop even though there's no batteries, there's no power supplies, simply by changing the magnetic flux through the loop, it acts as if there's a magical battery there pushing current through the loop because there's a potential difference, an apparent potential difference, what we call an EMF induced equal to 0.19 volts. Now we haven't talked about yet what the direction of that volt is. Remember, whenever we have a potential difference, there is a, there's a positive and negative end of the battery. We haven't talked about that yet, which then drives a current. And of course, we haven't talked about yet if the current is going clockwise or counterclockwise around this loop. That is for later. That is that when we look at Lenz's law, we'll then look at the details of determining what the direction of the current is. In the meanwhile, we're going to show you some more examples of how to use Faraday's law to find the EMF induced in a loop of wire or in a uh, what we call a, current, uh, a loop of conductor wire uh, when the magnetic field flux through the wire to the loop changes. For those who are interested in how we end up with volts here, and notice that the units here are meters squared times Tesla divided by seconds. How does that turn into volts? Well, let's find out. So the question here becomes, and let me use a different color so we can differentiate it. So the question is, is meters squared times Tesla's divided by seconds, is that equal to question mark volts? That's the way I claim. Well, first of all, let's define volts. Volts is defined as the work it takes to push a charge across a potential difference divided by the size of the charge. And so since work is equal to uh, Newton times meters and charges in coulombs, a volt can be defined as a Newton meter divided by coulomb. And then we've also learned that the force on a charge moving through magnetic field is equal to QVB. Then we can say that therefore B is equal to the force divided by the charge times velocity. And if we put in the units for that, we can say that force is in newtons, charge is in coulombs, and velocity is in meters per second, which means we get newtons seconds divided by coulomb times meters, which must be equal to teslas because the units for uh, magnetic field is teslas. So if we now plug in for teslas here, Newton seconds per coulomb times meters, and we put in, well, that's all we need to do. Let's try that. So instead of teslas, we're now going to write what teslas are equal to. So we have meters squared divided by seconds times teslas, and teslas is a newton times seconds divided by coulombs times meters. And of course, the seconds cancel out. One of these meters cancel out, so we have meters, newtons per coulomb. And if we go back over here, we have meters, meters newtons per coulomb, which is volts. And so we've just verified that meters squared times teslas divided by seconds is indeed volts. And we have the correct units over there. So just in case you're wondering, that's how you do that.